Yep. Welcome to the real room. <laughs> Put my fan down. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Colanda. This is Stanley. Thank you all so much for joining us. We were talking about when God cuts people off from us. Mm. Mm. He did say he'll do the tearing, right? Say so let the wheat and the tear grow together and he'll do the separating. And um, it happens, it's, it's, it's part of life. So when it happens, it happens. You think he, you think he does it because we won't? I think he does uh, in a lot of cases. He does it because in some cases he do it because we want. And sometimes he do it because we we want. So mm. um, sometimes it's against our will and sometimes it, it is going with our will. So, you know, I think the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? Um, and it, we always equate that to saints and sinners. But that also means you could be two saints and don't agree. Mm. And sometimes God will have to cause a separation. Um, because he's doing nothing but causing more confusion and things of that nature. So we do cut things off. And not just like so, romantic relationships. No, like any relationship. Friendships. Friendships, church, um, membership, uh, businesses. Uh, Collaborations. Yep. Uh, organizations. Any, every, anytime we have some type of interaction with people that's some level of a relationship so there are times where we don't identify when a relationship is for a season or a lifetime right and god knows so he that's when he does to separate right that's so good we don't um we don't know when to let go and i and i know we're human and we get wrapped up and our emotions get involved and we don't know when mm -hmm. to just let it go i don't think um we recognize like how we recognize opportunity being mm -hmm. like seasonal or this is just for this time being we, we don't see people like that yeah too. and so we try to take like i'm a, i'm really surprised by people who say like we've been this is my childhood best friend we've been best friends for 30 some years i'm really intrigued by those types of relationships because i'm like how y'all must have grew up yeah, and became the same person I have two friends that I honestly could say I've been friends with since I was 13. And um, even even in that relationship, we don't talk all the time. Uh, but when we talk, it's like we just got off the phone yesterday. Yeah. But the bond, you know, so there are instances where you can't have friends since you've been, you know, kids and teenagers and stuff like that. Uh, but I noticed that the older I'm getting, my circle is getting smaller. So it's not it's, as does it big make as it was. No, not at all. Really? All. I think that may be a man thing. No, nah, yeah, I, I don't, because my thing of it is, as long as I know in my heart that my intentions was pure and I didn't have any motives or, you know, I tried my best to be the, the best possible friend I could be. Um, and it doesn't mean that there's any beef or anything like that, but sometimes, you know, God just allowed the Holy Spirit to just separate you. And that's just part of the process. I guess I feel like maybe because at the core of who I am, I really just want everybody to go. Let's all go and be great together. And it's like, we can all be great together, but well, all we can all be great, but we won't all be able to do it together. That's the hard part. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> I, I do too, but, I'm, but I have to understand is if you can't be great with everybody, you know, out of the 12 disciples, even Jesus picked Judas, the one that would betray him. So sometimes, you know, in your inner count, there are times where, you know, you have to let one of them go, at least. You know, there's going to always be some adjustments when it comes to relationships. And you got to be okay with that. And that's something that I've learned, you know, you have to be okay with. I've, for the past, I would say two or three years, it's like some of the relationships that I've had with people for years, they just, just slowly just dwindled to the point where it no longer exists anymore. What is the change? What you say? What's the change? Is it you? I, Was it them? I, I think it's I think it's me as I grow and mature. I think things it just falls off. Just like with anything. If you have a tree growing, you know, the leaves don't stay on the tree forever. Yeah. They're there for a season. And then, you know, as the tree grows, the leaves change and 
it goes through those seasons, the leaves fall off and a new pair come. So um, it's just like peeling back layers. And sometimes relationships are, some, some relationships are just layers. They're not you, they're just layers for a season. So, and that's how I look at it. I don't get upset. I don't get bothered by it. Sometimes I may be like, well, dang, I was hoping that kind of would have worked out a little differently. But for the most part of me, it I keep it moving. I was thinking because, about, yeah. I was thinking about it earlier. Um, that quarantine was a good time for a lot of people to move on. Uh, it's like the Lord gave us all like a reason, a release mm. to dr- withdraw ourselves from other people. And I know everybody didn't take the hint, but this is the time for you to like leave your church, go to another one, to get a new job, perhaps to um, stop hanging out with that person that you was already feeling some type of way about. Like the Lord made it just where it was so easy to dissolve certain relationships. But um, mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of us saw that this is like, this was a pruning season. It really is. And I don't think it's over. I think. No, no. Yeah, I think we're far from over with this um, season that we in. Um, and that's something that I've been evaluating lately. You know, relationships, who am I connected to? It can this person withstand the storm? Um, with me um are they here for a lifetime or are they here just for a season mm-hmm. and f- to my surprise some people i thought would have been there for a lifetime they ended up being there for a season um it's no beef or anything like that but life happens and they go on to do other things and i go on to do other things as well but you know so, so how do you know when it's actually worth it that's the that's a problem i have like i've had friends who like they've said or did sideways things and I didn't necessarily confront them on it because I didn't feel like, I mean, I care, but I didn't care enough to have that conversation with them. So how do you know when the relationship is worth it? And like, okay, I don't like what you did. We're going to have to talk. What do you mean worth it as far as like letting it go? No, like even, you know, like keep going. You look at the fruit from the relationship. I think you look at the fruit from the relationship. If the person is willing to talk about it and they're willing to um adjust and be accountable for what they did i think i think you should be able to um keep it going however if they're not willing to change if they continue to be a hindrance and if they keep damaging you know what you got going on and things like that and it start affecting you especially health wise god bless you go with god <laughs> and i just tell them go with god you know I'll tell people go to hell. I say go with God. Go with God. <laughs> yeah. That's not what you mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. When I go with God is my way of saying, "All right, don't know. No. God bless you. Get out of my way." Yeah. So, and I and that's what I do. Seriously, I I I think you should base it off that because um, you should base it off that because you don't want to make a quick decision because it may just be a simple disagreement that y'all may have yeah. had or something like that. So y'all could probably talk it out and work it out, but. You know, some people, you do have to release them and be like, hey, I, you know, I'll see you when I get to heaven. If yeah. you make it. <laughs> if you make it, I'll see you when you get to heaven. Like one of the, not really, but like one of the most powerful, well, the whole Bible is powerful. But the fact that the Bible says people don't receive you, get the, shake the dust off your feet. And keep it moving and, and leave and go on about your day. <laughs> and there's a lot of dust I done kicked off my feet. <laughs> Because I don't know what it is, but I think I, when I was younger, I'd say probably about 10 years ago in high school, I was just like tight, like, you know, I am, I am starting no problem, but I ain't running from one. But now I'm at a point where I just, peace is so important to me till it's mm-hmm. crazy. Like, and it comes within relationships. Like, I don't live my life walking out the door trying to figure out who I can start drama with. Although there's some people that do that. I don't. I'm not a hothead and things like that. I'm not, you know, I don't want to say I'm not confrontational, but, you know, I'm not the one to start. I don't like that. I don't even like when people around me start arguing. It makes me so uncomfortable. So um, I try my best to keep peace within a whole, you know, with any relationship that I'm with, with anybody, because, you know, I don't want it to get to a point where, you know, we start having that hostility like that and we can't be around each other. I guess I felt like you could, you would be the one who could handle conflict. You so I can handle it. I just don't. I don't like it. 
you know, like, like it's, friendships. It's, I don't like it, it, period. Like, I like for instance, if, if I'm around a married couple and they start arguing, I get oh, yeah. real nervous. I'll be like, because I'll, I'll be knowing what to like, because I feel okay. like I have to take a side or I may want to interject, but I don't want to interject because this ain't got nothing to do with me. So just I get on, just get on your phone. Yeah, I just get on my phone and just go strolling like I don't hear them. So I, <laughs> it makes me very nervous. It makes me very nervous. But that's just me, though. But now if somebody come come at me with something. I'm not backing down now. You yeah. know, I can handle it head on. I've always been like that. So, you know, but when it's other people around me, I don't like that. Somebody said, say that, nephew. Peace. Now, peace is so mm-hmm. priceless. Like, if it's costing you peace, it's just way too much. It's- it's way too expensive. Way mm-hmm. too expensive. And yes. That ain't a reason. And sometimes, and sometimes God has to release people from your life because they may be causing too much confusion. Like, I remember I was going through it. I was catching hell this particular year. It was like every day I was walking out the door, I was just, it, it was just like, oh my God, I can't catch a break. I had lost my job. Then uh, my license got suspended because I didn't have no insurance on my car and I couldn't afford the insurance. Then, you know, I couldn't pay bills because I didn't have an income. I had got unemployment. Then my job that um, my job fought me from getting my unemployment. So I had to pay the unemployment back. I mean, it was like every week, every day, it was a trial after trial after trial after trial after trial. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to my barber about it. And um, he was like, you got to think, though, bro. He said, when you invite yourself into certain people's lives, you take on what they're dealing with as well. And he's, and I didn't think about it. Then I had to evaluate, like, wait a minute. I'm noticing my life connected to some of these people. Mm. That's probably why I'm struggling. And so I had to have, the Holy Spirit had to give me the, the strength to let those relationships go. And once I did it, then I started seeing things turn around and work out for my good. So I'm telling you, um, sometimes the Lord will allow a separation to take place because it may be damaging more than what you see. Yeah. Somebody said when like people come into our life, we need to say, who sent you? We need to figure out who sent you. <laughs> what are you here for? Um, and why did you come? Who sent you? Yeah. Is this I'm, like I'm, a godly I'm relationship? Here, yeah. Or is this something the enemy is trying to like create? Exactly. That's why I'm not a good networker. I'm not good at networking because I'm 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 so deep when it comes to that because I, I just don't connect with anybody. And I think a lot of people think because I'm cool with them, we're friends. And fortunately, that's not the case. You know, you're I can just, be very cool. just social. Yeah. What's very I'm very social. You know, I try to treat everybody with respect. I try to make sure everybody don't feel different. I try not to be moody and funny acting as some people claim I am. But a lot of people, you know, but but just because we're friendly does not mean we're friends. Yeah. And it is what it is. Say, preach my son in the gospel. Who's saying that? <laughs> Let me say, let me take a guess. Because I can't see who the comments are. Let me take a guess. That either got to be Terrell, Daryl, PJ. And start with a T. But I don't know the first name. It's T Harris. Oh, I don't know who that is. Oh, that T. might be Toy. That's Toy. Oh, like key, toy. key player. Yeah, that's Toy. That's Toy Harris. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was Toy. One more comment, he getting blocked. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. Yeah, you got to let these folks go. I mean, even in even in church, there's some people that I've done in, min- that in ministry. I see you when I get to heaven, if you make it. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to, yeah, the Lord does allow separations to take place. Yeah. You know, he did it to Abraham. He said, I want you to go this place, but I need you to leave your nephew Lot right here. Don't bring Lot with you. Mm-hmm. And he had to leave Lot. And everybody's carrying a lot with them. So if you're trying to go to that next level, you better put that lot down. <laughs> so you can go to the so you can go higher. So lot just saying. holding you a lot holding you back. No, a lot holding you back. I'm gonna preach that one day. Somebody gonna spill my message. That sounds good. A lot holding you back. Mm-hmm. You have a lot holding you back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody gonna preach it. I, I just put it out there. Somebody <laughs> gonna preach it. It's the truth, though. Everybody got, and that was Abraham thing. He he was loyal a lot. He was trying to take care of him because that was his nephew. You know, that was his his brother's son. And he was trying to 
filling that gap. But at some point, God had to say, listen, what I have for you is not for life. You've done everything you can for life. So I need you to leave life and follow me. Do you and Abraham, think, because he loved God, he had to do it. Do you think before it gets to the point where the Lord has to cut it off, he's already told you? Absolutely. I believe the Lord said warning. God never moves without warning. And I believe that God always gives you a warning of what he's about to do. You know, a lot of people that had dreams, people that came and said things, you know, heard things that this person is doing. You got to, yeah, I believe that the Lord does send warning before he breaks it up. So the more we just continue to let it go, knowing that we just perhaps prolonging the next thing that's coming mm -hmm. because this person cannot yeah. go with you. Yeah, because you could be holding up space for the person that's that's yeah. supposed to be there for your real friend, you know. And you know um it's yeah. so funny you said that. I um I've kind of had this experience where like in one season, you know, me and this person was cool and then something shifted as I really started like trying to pursue purpose and like step into what I know I'm supposed to be doing. Then somebody else came into the picture and the old person made a comment like, you don't need me no more. You got such and such. And it's like, oh my God, like, I didn't know it was a competition, but isn't the, like, I guess I just feel like if we're all believers and shouldn't you want what's best for me? And if the Lord is saying in this season, this is who you need to seek counsel from. You need to cling to this person. You shouldn't feel no type of way about it. But you shouldn't, but it you're right. People do. <laughs> people do. People get in their feelings so quick because they be like, this is what this how it's supposed to be. We we go to God with our own motives and our own agendas. And then when he do things that we don't want him to do, then we get mad and yeah. we kick and power. You're right. But we say we totally surrender to him and we giving God our yes. We be lying. <laughs> Just lying. I gave God my yes. We have a question, Stanley. Do you feel like the per like that person's season was up in your life? The what person? Whoever you referring, like whoever has left. Yeah, I believe they are. I, I believe because they never. They, first of all, number one, they never came back, and number two, there was a peace when they left. I felt like a weight because the the friendship started to become a burden. Mm. And I felt like I was carrying more of the weight and something, you know, like that. And so when that person left, it was kind of like I was like, whoo. You could breathe could again. Breathe, you know? mm. And then what was so ironic, right after that, you know, a couple of months went by, the Lord ended up sending somebody else to actually be a true friend to me. Matter of fact, never, I don't, I don't really think I've had a friend like this particular person because this particular person was doing things that in a friendship that I've never seen done before. And it's kind of like, you know, you make you kind of skeptical, but then when you realize like, no, this is who the Lord has put in, yeah. place in your life. Cause you're not used to that. You this know, is what a healthy used, friendship looks like. You know, like you're not used to people helping you and, yeah. and, and, you know, helping you cause you were always the one to, to be there. And, do yeah. and that was always the story of my life. As a friend, I was always the one that had to be there. I was always the one that had to pray. I was always the one that had to, you know, that that to give the advice and stuff like that. So when I needed somebody to do that for me, I didn't have a lot of that. So yeah. when I started letting some of those people go, God began to send people that could pour into me just as much as I could pour into them. Yeah. So yeah. That's kind of like when and I was in when I was in college, um, me and my roommate Ashley, we was roommates all the way up to senior year um like really early on we really connected and she would tell me she loved me I used to be like oh god she is so weird like girls don't say that to each other I only tell no, my mom well at that time it was weird like I only told my mama I love her I don't even remember mm -hmm. telling my sister that I love her and this girl I just met it's like I love you friend I'm like oh my god it's something wrong with her <laughs> But now it's like, okay, this is what a healthy friendship looks this is what like. A healthy friendship. Yeah. I think a lot of times we could be so used to, to chaos and confusion. We don't yes. know what we don't know what healthy friendships look like. Yes. We're so used to just, 
yeah all kind of craziness that goes on so yeah yeah and i had to learn like i said it was weird for me at first but you know i think i'm doing pretty good right now i think i'm doing pretty good right now it's almost like that pain that you're used to or that weight you're used to carrying that instead of when you notice that it's not there anymore instead of being grateful you're trying to figure out uh-uh, what's, what's something what's wrong it's like it's mm. so familiar to you that it's almost like it's more normal than, um, and so then that means we go into healthy relationships, expecting the other foot to drop, the sh- other shoe to drop, because we've had to deal with so many bad friendships. Like, yeah. no shade to the people in my life, but like I think at thirty two, maybe thirty one, I had like a real round like three sixty friend. Cause I'm kind of mm. like you because I'm in, because I'm an, an encourager. I'm always the one encouraging in most of my friendships. A lot of people don't, mm-hmm. you know, I'm the strong friend. So a lot of people don't always check on the strong friend, but now I got somebody who, who like check on me, call me out. And mm-hmm. it's almost like, Oh my God. Like, I didn't know you, you could have this in a friendship and you're not jealous. <laughs> You got your own thing. You're not trying to do the same thing I'm doing. You're not trying to mm-hmm. build something like what I'm building. You're not trying to get on my platform. You're building your own thing. So you know, you're not you're not intimidated um, or anything like that. And 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 that's you know and that's how I am. I feel like if I'm like if we're friends, then we're gonna be friends. We're not gonna be competing with each other, intimidated. You know, right? Whatever. Like like one of my fr- I remember somebody asked me about uh, about my homeboy Chris. And it was like, oh, how long have y'all been friends? I'm like, we've been friends for years. And I guess they assumed that me and him had became friends after I had started Shakers and stuff like that. I was like, no, we were friends way before this. And I told that person, I said, we're like actually really friends. Like this ain't church friendship. Right, like, this right. is actually like a brotherhood. And that's, and I don't think a lot of people are used to that when they get that. But, you know, we were supporting each other when we were preaching at, you know, little 19, 20 years old, preaching at little churches. And, you know, if some one of us had to go preach, then all of us would go and support and, you know, stuff like that. And we still carry that to this very day. We right. still do that. Right. And um, we're not jealous of each other, intimidated, you know. At, you know, when he was having his services and things, I would go and support. Did not ask to be on the program. I would come and whatever you needed me to do, I would just do it. If not, i just come and be a support to the service and be involved. Vice versa with me, you know, when we put on services with shakers and stuff, he would come and be a part and everything like that. Um, and that's that's how friendship works. You know, you have your disagreements and you have your your spats or whatever, but then you realize that if the friendship is worth it, you we talk it out. And we right. Keep it right. You know, so yeah, um, it happens. It happens. Right. But a lot of church people don't have friends. They and you they and you said that before church. because you you said that some most of us well, when I say us I mean church people have a hard time with social skills because we're so used to communicating and dealing with people who think like us look you know mm-hmm. and believe the same thing that we believe and so when we are talking to somebody who's different who has different beliefs we don't even know how to in, to interact with them it's like some mm-hmm. of us so deep and wonderful all our friends say. Because exactly, <laughs> exactly. We're so deep and wonderful. They are all our friends, a part of the same denomination, the same organization. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, 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 growing up, I will say this: although we grew up in the church, and my dad was, my dad was elder, my mom was a missionary, you know, and we grew up in the church, and 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 we heard all of that growing up. My parents, one thing I will say, my parents did: they made sure me and my brother had street sense because uh, they didn't want us to be so churchy to where we couldn't relate to people that w- it wasn't going to church because right. how are we going to win them? How are we going to understand them and stuff like right. that? Yeah, right. they had standards in the house and we knew what to do and what not to do, but we were not as green to the things of the world. And to be honest, when I first got saved, majority of my friends were not saved at that time. And by me being saved, it did not hint, you know, it kind of made me the light of my circle. And so to this day, you know, one of my friends got married back in September and we have been friends since middle school. And uh, one of them came to me and was like, man, it's so amazing to see how, you know, you're going forth and God is using you. And when I look at you, it kind of inspires me 
because I will say, you know, your life was testimony for the rest of us. And that speaks volumes to me. And I, you know, I give God the glory for that. But we do have to work on our social skills as believers because you can still be friends with unbelievers. And who knows, your friendship may be what draws them to Christ. Right, right. So, yeah. That's true. Yeah. You can be so deep, deep and uh, wonderful. So, heavenly bound, we're no earthly good. Earthly good. We don't want to talk to nobody. And see, and I think, I mean, it makes me think about because in my, in the professional world, I work in HR and diversity and inclusion. And I know it may seem weird to some people, but then I do recognize that when you are like in a room full of people who don't believe what you believe, that is the opportunity for you to be the light. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of us being the light, just sitting around each other. Nobody is illuminating the darkness or, you know, drawing people. And I was listening to something the other day and it was talking about how we forget what our our main um, purpose is supposed to be and that's to be making witnesses, making disciples. And the only way we can do that is um, deal with some people who don't think like us who don't believe what we believe and I don't no normally walk up to strangers and start evangelizing the Lord uses me where I connect with people first we form some type of bond and then I I throw some word in there you know whenever they're sharing or whatever but I know I've shared with you all before like the Lord has allowed me to be friend um oh I don't want to say that <laughs> I'm gonna say they don't think like me they don't think like me that we don't have the same beliefs. I'll say it like that. Mm. And it's never, you know, because people can make you feel like when people don't believe like you, that they can like drag you over to their side. Mm. Or, um, but you, you better be careful because you don't want that spirit to get on you. Okay, and I don't want that spirit from the church people to get on me. But <laughs> I'll leave it. Right. I'll leave it. And I'll leave it. Sinners are not the only ones who who carry evil spirits. <laughs> or you got some of the ones he the outside, and they be sitting there. <laughs> he the outside. He the outside. You got all that foolishness going on in their life. You're right. I'll leave it. You're I ain't right. gonna do that tonight. But it's the truth. Like it's the truth. People base that off. One of my good friends, he grew up Muslim. His dad is a Muslim. His family grew up Muslim. But when I tell you, if I ever needed him for anything, he's there. I mean, hands down, one of the most loyal friends that I have. And people think because I'm saved and, you know, they, they see what I do. They, I have a lot of friends that are not in the church that are not quote unquote saved that are people that you at least expect, but they respect my walk. Uh, I don't compromise when it comes to my walk with God. And um, and I just continue to be a light. And if they're willing to stick around, hey, I'm not going to cut them off. Right. And I hinder my progress. So, right. you know, some of them actually help my progress. You know, I ain't going to church, but, you know, you need me to help you set up or something, I'll do it. But I ain't coming to church. That's just how some of them are. So it happens. It happens. <laughs> Missionary Douglas, how is it working in corporate America as a Christian? Who asked that? <laughs> Ask that question. <laughs> Toy. It that has is, nothing to do with the topic. <laughs> and it's normal. I don't, I guess a lot of people feel like they have to put on two different hats. I am who I am on the real room as I am at work. Now I, my mouth isn't as slick. Um it's more professionally toned. Now I use I'm more careful of my words and stuff. But I, like Stanley said, I don't make any compromises. If I'm ever put in a position where it's going to compromise my beliefs, I'm going to say something about it. So I'm able to work with people. But see, I'm one of those people who I know my gift is for people outside of the four walls. So I know I have to learn how to work with people who don't believe the same thing I believe because mm -hmm. my ministry is not limited to church only. Yeah, same here. And um, somebody told me that because I used to always wonder why why church people don't support my stuff. And somebody told me this. They said, because you're not called to the church. You're called to the world. And um, sometimes God allows us to go out. Um, that's why I said I don't have a lot of preacher friends. I think as far as friends that that I consider friends, friends that really preach, I, don't, I do not have a lot of preacher friends. 
Um, number one, because I don't want to talk about church all the time. Right. And number two, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be around here. You know, we all we talking about is, you know, different messages, stuff like that. <laughs> I have friends that are well round. My, and then the preacher friends that I do have, they're well-rounded. You know, they're normal human beings. I don't even think we even talk about preaching when we when we do talk. So, um, you know, so, yeah, I don't I don't do that because it's a whole world we got to reach. So, right. Yeah. Right. And if we're only limiting our conversation to people who think like us, we're doing a disservice mm -hmm. to the believers. Uh, I mean, to the body. Um, because somebody exactly. had to reach them. And not to say that most of the women I work with, I mean, like they may believe that there is a God, but they don't always have a relationship with him. And so then the Lord uses me to be able to minister to them through marriage mm -hmm. or, you know, you'll be surprised the questions and stuff I get is some is from church people, but then I have a lot of people who don't necessarily attend church or are affiliated with any denomination, but want some godly advice. And so that's what we're supposed to be offering. But I have mm -hmm. to put myself in a position where I am not you know, intimidated or like, oh, I cannot be dealing with people who are not saved. Like, only my circle is for the believers only. Yeah, that's so shallow. I feel like that is so shallow. And then that's because why all, when you... all the bank investors not saved. So what, you're not going to get you exactly. some money? <laughs> Everybody exactly. you collaborate with in business is not going to always be saved. Exactly. You don't quit your job because ain't nobody saved. Right. But how yeah, else we are we going to get the money that's uh -huh. laid up um, for the righteous that the wicked have unless we deal with the wicked? On some level. I remember one time I we was doing a fundraiser for Shakers and this particular person, um, I was cool, you know, we were cool and things like that. And um he ended up I we was doing like a cash out thing, so we text people like donate this amount shakers and help us this and that. And he ended up sending like a hundred dollars. And it was so shocking because I'm like, I don't even know this dude. I mean, we all know him like that, and I know he ain't in church and stuff like that. So you know, it was just to show, like, if I would have been like, oh, I only associate with this group of people, I would have missed out on that opportunity. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's those people who support the most, <laughs> who give the most. Hello. Hello. Yeah. They don't want this gospel tonight. No, it's, it's yeah. those people. So I went there, open them. I have probably had more referrals purchases and stuff from um well I, I would say like referrals I've had a lot of people who don't necessarily believe or go to church buy my products for other people who do believe mm -hmm. then the believers who I really you know intended it to be a tool for so exactly it happens and and that's why I believe when the scripture says the weather the week is laid up, I think that comes through having certain levels of relationship. Right. right. With who we consider we quote unquote wicked. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, now those right. are the relationships. and what's so funny is those relationships seem like they last longer than the relationships that we quote unquote have with our spiritual peers. And do you have a spiritual that, mom? No, my mom. I have my mom and my dad. I have my, my parents. That's how I, feel too. I don't I don't I'm not quick to label folk in that capacity because spiritual means that they birthed me in the spirit realm and I am who I am spiritually because of them. But I believe because my parents were saved and and, and they are anointed, I don't think I needed spiritual. I didn't parents. know that's, that's what that, I didn't I didn't know that's what that meant. I've had yeah. instances I don't have one in the spirit either because I got my mom and daddy. But I've had um, in corporate America, somebody try to like mom me. And so I think sometimes when we think about, you know, moving people out of our life, we're just thinking about friendships, but like mm -hmm. it's, it's even extended to people trying to be your mentor. <laughs> like if somebody is asking to be your mentor, hey, let me take you out of lunch. I want to show you such and such. I kind of feel like, as the mentee, I should approach you and say, hey, I love how you 
I don't know, handling exactly. your business. I love how you're you seem to be, you know, you manage your marriage well and children, and then I come to you and say, Will you mentor me? But mm-hmm. um, I think we do get I'm a lot of about that too. The, the Lord does send a lot of warnings. Um, but sometimes we're we're so thirsty for um I don't know, to be social. Somebody made a somebody made a statement to somebody. Because I remember somebody told me this a while ago that somebody, you know, somebody somewhat known had made a statement about me and said, I feel like he's not teachable. So Hmm. I told him in response to that, I said, well, ask them what makes them think that they're qualified to even teach though. Like You don't even know me and you're, you're accusing me of not being teachable, but have you taken the chance to even reach out to me you know to you know this and that and the other um just because you don't want to be taught by him exactly and who who, who qualifies you to be a teacher wow because based off the fruit of your labor i don't think i want your wisdom right but i mean that's you know and i'm not here to judge it may work for somebody else but that's it's not if it's it's not not working for him it's not working yeah it's it's definitely not going to work for me so and and that's and it's the thing, it's the season that I'm in. Some people may take it as arrogance or pride. Take it however you want to. I know it's not. But I am so careful about my spiritual walk to the mm-hmm. point where I am very particular about who lays hands on me, who speaks into my life, who tries to impart things into me. Um, I'm very careful about that. I don't get in everybody's prayer and prophecy lines. I don't be on everybody's prayer calls and stuff like that. I don't connect with people because of what... Um, they can do for me. I am so careful about Sam, connections. They want to know who is it, who said it. <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's messy. I'm not going to do that. That's so messy. I'm not going to do that. No. But people think, and and some people may take that as, oh, he's he's arrogant or this and that. If you really know me, you know that I'm not. But hey, if that's how you feel, go with God. He's the only one that can change you. I say it's twofold because some people are too timid or afraid of rejection to add. So a mentor that sees something in someone and the Lord leads them to approach, I think it's okay. That is very true. true. I'm talking about those like I've had a what she calls herself, a prophetess um, like text or DM me or something like that and was like I want to take you out to lunch and you know, you, you're another woman in ministry and I just want to be able to groom you and show you the ropes and stuff like that. Now, we don't really have a relationship. I just know you. Mm-hmm. Like, I know your name. Like, we, yeah. in passing, we don't really have a relationship. And so that yeah. kind of stuff like, is As far like, as like, men, people that I would consider mentors, um, for me, I mean, outside of, you know, my parents and, and my pastor, um, you know, people that I was outside of those people that I would say, you know, I'm those people that I that I've watched through the years, right? And I've seen them in their ups and in their down downs, and they've remained consistent in who they are. Those are people that I would not mind being mentored by. Um, I don't want to be mentored by everybody. And then my thing of it is, don't ask me to be a mentee and you train me, but then you want to you want me to sow a seed into you every month. That's not going to happen either. Um, so yeah, that's not unless happen. it's like a mentorship program. And I've seen somebody say like people shouldn't even be charging to be mentored because mentorship exactly. is free. Those are actually coaching programs, and those require you know some type of fee, but not mentorship. Yeah, if you're going to take somebody under your wing and show them some things and and talk to them some about some things, then I yeah. feel like just do that. Like one one of my mentors, I said, I, I know he don't mind. I've said it publicly before is uh, Pastor Irvin Jones. And um, we don't talk often, but when we do, we talk about life. Um, we talk about things that go on in our, you know, in life. And, and I get advice from him because he is, you know, somebody that is very similar to where I am in my life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel like I can learn a lot from him, you know, but, um, you know, but it's, 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 he shares with me some advice. He shares with me some of his things, you know, and I, and I take heed to it and I listen to it and, and I apply it to my life. And, you know, there's no alternative motives or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like I'm trying to connect with him so I can get an engagement, you know, stuff like that. I I don't do that. I don't do that. Although there are a lot of people that do, it's a pure mentorship, you know? So, um, and like I said, I'm very, very particular 
about that. And then I get some young people one day to say that they want me to be their mentor. The same way he pours into me, I will pour back into them, yeah. you know, because I it is needed. We need to be um, more vigilant with our spiritual life mm -hmm. because I'm learning, I'm in everyday seminary with Dr. Darius Daniels, and I'm learning that what we allow to, or who we allow to influence us also influences our decision making. And so if I am, if I got this mentor who, first of all, they're not really a mentor. Um, I don't know every mom, but basically they just taught me how to be them. You have a lot of wind in your background. I don't know what you're doing over there. Yeah, a lot of wind? Yeah, it sounds like you're moving or something. No. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, that it's probably rubbing against my shirt. Okay. Um, But, um. Okay, what I was saying. Something about oh, Darius Daniels. Um, so like if you whoever you're allowing to mentor you, their conversation, whatever they're teaching you will influence your decision making. So you, we have to be careful about that, who we allow to pour into us um and say something to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then now, some you know, you season. you divorce. Like they divorce because you use their advice to make decisions. Exactly. And some mentors are not forever. Some are just for a season. Um, you know, some spiritual fathers and mothers are just, or as we can see with their last year and now, how all of these generals in the faith have left, are leaving. Like, they, I mean, they get out of here quick. Yes, they are. So, you know, and, you know, and I believe that those sons and daughters that they had under them, you know, now it's the time for them to step up and take on that, those ranks and take it to the next level and yeah. pour into somebody else. So your mentors and nobody's going to be on this earth forever, you know. So when you do have a mentor, you got to take advantage of because there's going to be a time where God's going to do the separating. Right. And it may be due, through death or it just may be through a simple fact that, okay, time up. Y'all yeah. relationship is over. So, yeah, it happens. Yeah. It happens. So I have a question. Is it possible for God to separate you, but then bring you back together? I think or once so. he separates you, it's over. I think he can bring you back together. Because that's what I was gonna ask you about. Um with with your experience, would you be open to um repairing or well, I guess it wouldn't be a repair if like you you guys like come at it as new people um but i do think like the lord cuts people off for a season to allow there to be some growth so like there's this person like i use the quarantine as an opportunity to like distance myself i feel like you know we already weren't really talking that much but now you got a lot going on i got a lot going on too so i use this as an opportunity and kind of ran into them the other day and i was like okay you know the quarantine is not necessarily over but it's coming it's it's not as strict as it was let me see maybe mm -mm, same person so I'm like, oh. okay. <laughs> yeah. okay so even time yeah. couldn't allow, didn't mature you but i think he will in some instances um maybe because some people may just need time to be mature um mm -hmm. so that you all yeah. can be a mutually yeah. beneficial relationship yeah, because everybody cannot handle all seasons of your life. Right. You know, everybody can't be around you when, you, when you're going through your hard seasons. They can only be around when you're going through your good seasons because you're able to encourage them. Um, and so there are instances where the Lord will cause a separation for a season. Yeah. And I believe that he will bring you back at the end of the day. Now, I'm the type of person, you know, when, whenever, the, whenever that relationship severs, I don't have any beef with anybody. I don't hold anything in my heart against anybody. I, I don't hate anybody because honestly, I laugh and joke a lot, but I, I really, really want to go to heaven, like for real, seriously. <laughs> and I'm not going to let nothing stop me from nothing. getting there. And my prayer is if the Lord was to pull my number at any moment, at least give me a second to repent <laughs> and get my life together before I check out of here. Don't let me just die. Like, just give me a minute. Yeah. And like, okay, God, yeah. I repent. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. But um, but I try not to hold any grudges in my heart against people. I try not to look at people d differently. I try not to uh, be judgmental. I try to just kind of be free in that. Now, I've been in some situations where people have done some really grimy things to me. They've said some things. They've done some things, you know, 
a lot of times they've done things and, and I've heard and they don't even know I know they did it, but I know they did it. You know what I'm saying? But when I see them, you know, I talk to them as if nothing's happened. I don't, I don't hold anything against them. And because again, I really want to go to heaven and yeah. I, I can go to heaven with hatred in my heart. Yeah, so. But like you said, there are people who can't handle like your hard seasons. Mm-hmm. I've learned that there are people who can't handle your favor seasons because mm-hmm. I've had relationships where it was like if I was experiencing, experiencing some favor or this was like a harvest season, I've experienced jealousy from a person. And it's like, gosh, I can't even tell you what's going on because you only seem to like me best when I'm going through because then that allows you to be my encourager. But it's like, you don't know what to say when now that I'm harvesting and I'm living in favor, you have no idea what to say. And so I'm learning that, okay, you may just be a person who I have to go to I don't know when I need advice about certain things, but you're not somebody who I can share my, like constantly share my journey with. Because I don't want you to just be, you know, waiting for, because they got to one point where it was like, they kept asking me about something that they've had encouraged me about before. It's almost like they were looking for it to be bad so they can jump in and be the encourager again. But it's like, at some point, sis, I was supposed to learn from what you told me, implement it and do better. But so there are some people who can't handle when you're living in favor. Yeah, they can't handle it, you know. So, yeah, and God knows the Bible says let the wheat and the tech grow together, and I will do the separating. When God knows a person's time is up in your life, He knows how to release them. And uh, as 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 when I worked in the mortgage industry, he used to it's start graceful exit. He knows how to make it to where there's no like no beef, yeah. no. No yeah. access trouble to it. it. It'll just be a graceful exit. You go your way, I go my way. When we see each other in public, we still speak, we embrace, and then we go back to our individual lives. Yeah, uh, and that's very possible. So, yeah, God, God gives these people a graceful exit. So that's good. Mm-hmm. That's a that's the name of a book or something. Some people they got it from the mortgage it. industry. It's called graceful uh, exit. People don't that's, know how to exit gracefully. They have they to don't know the scene. They want yeah. you to know that they were there. Be, I did all of you. I did all of you. And you just go do me like this. You oh. don't do me like this. Uh-oh. I gave you 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> just bow down, bow out, and leave gracefully. And hey, it is what it is. I know it hurts. I know it's going to be like, oh, man. But you got to accept the will of God. It's just like when a person transitions and leaves here on earth. We don't want it to happen. But when it right. happens, we have to submit to the will of God. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with broken relationships. You know, when God says, okay, that's it. Um, it's a story in the New Testament with Paul and Barnabas. They were best friends. They did everything together. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost fell on both of them and said, separate yourself. So Barnabas had to go one way and Paul went another way for the, for the, for the sake of the kingdom. So I was talking about it this. Happens. I was talking about this in my stories the other day and I was encouraging people to break away from who is breaking you. And I I think it goes back to the fact like we don't know when it, when we need to leave a relationship, friendship, collaboration, a job or whatever, we don't know. But so for people who are listening or who will hear this, like I know people always be like, well, the, the grass ain't always green on, on the other side, but it's better than what you're experiencing now. Like, I don't know how we can trust God to like pay our bills or give us money to pay our bills. We trust him with sickness, with, you know, mm. illness to take care of. We trust him for safety, but we have a hard time trusting the Lord with relationships and that he can send people who genuinely care, who genuinely love you, genuinely support mm. you. I see a lot of women like speaking in tongues, standing like worshiping, running around the church. But when it comes to a relationship, they make horrible decisions. Yes, yeah, sis is dealing with trash. And it's like, girl, this is the same God who provides this, can uh, provide this as well. I used to say that most people that are like prophetic, they make bad relationship choices mm. naturally. Like they marry the wrong people and it'd be a mess. And I'm like, you mean to tell me all that prophesying y'all be doing, y'all can't see this stuff. So it like, come on now. You know, but I think that's true. It do be the prophets who've been married several times, several <laughs> times, and you know, or, or this and that going on, and that's like ah, uh, you can't. I saw one ask one lady, like, you know, you seeing all this in my life, 
you ain't see that he was gonna do that or that the second husband was gonna do that like i be at one to ask questions you know god is talking to you a lot about me like what does he say about your what you is know, he saying concern i think a lot of times we ignore what he says about us because we're so busy on what he's saying about everybody else and I get it, you know, when you're a prophet, you're open to everything around you. But I feel Especially like your life should, your your life is like advertisement. So like if you were telling me this is what thus saith the Lord and you could trust mm -mm. what I have to say, then I expect your life to be lined up with some good decisions. Mm -mm. They don't they're not always look at Elijah. Elijah was one of the greatest prophets in the world, but he battled depression and tried and wanted to kill himself. Wanted God to kill him. So it happens because you're so big on Prophecy is to edify the body, but you even the prophets need a prophet. Yeah. So, and I think that's what it is. And a lot of people don't prophesy out of prophets because they feel like, oh, you should already know this. But sometimes, you know, the Lord is just using you to minister to everybody else. And you don't want to hear yourself. You don't want to hear what he got to say for you. Sometimes you can't hear. Yeah, it happens. No, you didn't. Y'all don't I know. I just yawn. I'm sorry. Who are you getting older? Oh, that's right. You got a birthday yeah. coming up. You getting older. I'll be 28 next month, guys. A week from today. No. I, well, I like, not a you week, don't, a month. You don't want to... This would have been your last moment on earth. You don't want to spend it lying. I don't. But in my heart, I'll be 28. I okay. feel like I'm 28. Say that. I feel like... But you know what, though? I will say this. Outside of my grave, I think the older I'm getting, the younger I'm looking. <laughs> I, I told you men age well. I am. I, I saw a picture I posted yesterday when I got out of church. I said, I look, I look like five years younger. Every, oh, now, every now and then, you know, like when um, Facebook shows like what you used to do years ago, mm -hmm. when I look at the early photos of us on the river, Stanley, you look sick. You were so skinny. It was like give them a sandwich we always oh, not. That's, mm -hmm. yes i was the same way in college it's like we be thinking we we fine uh, and then this weight look a little look makes us look like adults it does it really does <laughs> and i don't like the grades i think i'm gonna die i'm getting tired of these grades because it's, it's making me look mad. i'm tired of going places and then people think mark is younger than me i hate it i really do it what makes me got grades? He just don't have but his are not as noticeable as my, like mine's in my beard but his but people always say he's younger than me it never fails yeah they be like who the youngest him like what well, that's because <laughs> he's also more mild mannered so like you don't really get to see his personality we see yours up front so then we be like okay he got it no no not at all Marcus is way older than me. Don't do that. Way older. Don't. <laughs> but people do that every time. Like we go somewhere and eat or something, and somebody asks, "Well, who's the youngest? Who's the oldest?" I'm like, "Who you think the oldest?" And they'll point at me, and then I'm like, "Who's the youngest?" And they'll point at uh, Marcus. <laughs> they'll point at Marcus. Like, wow, that's messed up. But it's all good. Yeah. If you wait, I dye this beard. I'll be back. I ain't gonna even, I'm not gonna even convince you otherwise because when as soon as I can, this little patch of gray I got, I'm gonna die too. I was listening on what's his name, Bishop Daryl Hines, and he said his wife told him she don't want him to let that die go. She like, she don't want to see him with grace. <laughs> so he said that's why he keep dying his health because she don't want to see grace. And they say you got an old spirit, Stanley. Oh, I have an old spirit. No, that means I'm saved. They always tell saved people that they have an old spirit. You do that's have all an old it is. spirit. Ooh, no, I, mean, I should have heard the I, music I, Stanley was listening to when we first came on. <laughs> I never heard a poem in my life. The Pace Sisters. That was a I know the I know who they are, but I don't know if I know a song by them. Oh yeah, you're not safe for real. <laughs> you're not safe. I for know real. who they Unless are. About. Up, like a Methodist or something. <laughs> How do you not know a song about a page? When God is in the building, I know you know that one. I know that one. Yeah. yeah. When God is in the building. I think that's their biggest hit, though. That might be See? Hit. So don't do, don't do that like that. Oh, but they had some other ones. Like they were the Clark sisters. No, they were just that. as popular as the Clark sisters. You know, so. You know, I think so. In my world, they were. They were Koji, too. So. Oh, we're, I we're didn't know that. Yeah, they, yeah, they church of God in Christ. Do you have any events or anything coming up? 
Oh, no, my birthday is next month. I just want to throw that out there. My birthday well, is next month. Well, let's go ahead and do it now. What's your cash app so we can pin it? I, uh, no, I wait to February. I I, I wait to February. It's your you know what? Y'all should throw a virtual birthday party on the real room. I think I want to do that. Okay. Because my birthday is on a Sunday, so we can do the virtual party on that Monday, which is the 22nd. Everybody so, just come in and say stuff. They can come on the Zoom, tell me happy birthday, and um, I think I deserve that. I don't ask for much, but I think I deserve that. Okay. I think I deserve that. And y'all make sure y'all have y'all thousand dollar seed. Thousand dollar seed. You gonna be passing our prophecies? I ain't doing that. I, I'll bring a profit on for y'all to do it. Yeah, that would be nice. I, I want a virtual birth because I don't want a parade. I don't want y'all coming in my neighborhood blowing horns. That's aggravating. Well, you so, plan okay. it and we'll, we'll be there. I can't plan it. It's my birthday. I can't plan it. I'm already planning my time. Oh, that was that was my hint. Yeah, you and Marcus can do it. Can do it. Do it. And we'll do it for y'all birthday in September. That's so far away. I know, right? We'll do a virtual birthday party. Yeah, let, let everybody that want to say something come on in. Maybe we can like do it for your 35th. That'd be nice. No, 35. I'll be in Dubai for my 35th. So. Oh, I'll you're not turning 35? No, I'm not turning 35. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning 28 <laughs> on the 21st of February. Here he goes. 28. Like, I know. I know. All right. It's yeah. all for me to accept it. So nothing, nothing with Shakers? No, not at the moment. Um, but if you do want to be a part of Shakers, we do have some outreach things coming up. I'm just trying to see with this pandemic how we could do it. Cause I want to because we are getting back to feed the homeless and doing some outreach stuff. Um and actually in the summertime, I I am thinking about doing something. I don't want to put it out there yet. Okay. I just got to see. But if you do want to be a part of Shakers uh, and you're a young adult and you just want to do some ministry work and things like that, send us an email to shakersmovement at gmail.com or you can go to uh, the Shakers Facebook page, send an in inbox or um, IG. Is we, we are Shakers um, on Instagram and just let us know and connect with us um, because it's something, it, yeah, it's some things that I really, really want to do. We were going to do it last year, but but the pandemic hit, it just knocked us out. So yeah. Yeah. So we're definitely gonna be uh working this year. We got to can't sit two years out. They're gonna okay. think I had a scandal or something. Yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for joining us in the real room. Until mm -hmm. next time. <laughs> Peace out.